you recently had put together a panel at WonderCon. I did. Um, and now with all, there's been recently all this stuff in the news like Abercrombie and Fitch and Angelina Jolie about body image. Mm -hmm. You sort of beat everyone to it back right, in March. Right. What instigated you to put that together and talk about it? Oh my gosh. Um, yes, I put this panel together at WonderCon. Um, I've been speaking on the convention circuit for a couple of years now, but I had never put a panel together on my own. I've always been invited just to be a guest, um, or in some cases I've moderated a few, but this was my first putting it together. And um, it all started on Facebook. I, um, long story short, uh, 2010 was kind of a wacky year for me, and I gained about 50 pounds, and um, so I'm about 50 pounds heavier than I've been most of my Hollywood time, and I'm coming to terms with that. And I put a photo up on Facebook. It was a self-photo from a trip to Vegas I had with a girlfriend to see Guns N' Roses, actually. And uh, it was a self-photo, but it was like long shot, which is something I typically don't do. Typically, it's the face shots. And I did a long shot, and I was like, I look good. You know, I had a t-shirt on and jeans. And this guy um, leaves a comment on the photo and says, I've seen you look better, Leah. Boom. That was a guy. First comment <laughs> on my Facebook page. And I mean, it blew up like with other people like, and you know, I just, I, I respond, and so I responded and I said, you know, I have, but the last time you saw me, because I, I, I worked with him on, on Deadwood actually years ago as a background, I said, the last time you saw me, I had just done 40 days of the master cleanse, hadn't eaten or drank anything for 40 days and, you know, was hallucinating and was very unhealthy, even though I was this big. Um, so in his eyes, okay, I could see it, but it got me thinking, like, why is it acceptable and okay for people to just say whatever they want and bring it up? And um, that day, I just came up with the idea, and so I submitted a proposition to WonderCon, and it was called All Shapes and Sizes, um, Body Image and Women's Issues in the Entertainment Industry. And I reached out to an amazing group of girls, and they all came on board. Um, Lynn Chen, who writes um, a blog called The Actor's Diet, as well as uh, Thick Dumpling Skin, and she talks about Asian women and body images. Um, she has battled with binge eating. Um, Amber uh, Kriz, who runs BodyHeart.org, which is this very positive community for women. You go and you take a picture, and you pick your favorite body part, you put a heart on your face, and you do a whole photo shoot, and then you, you, know, you blog about it. Um, and so she's been speaking all over the world. She's a former dancer off-Broadway, and so body images abound in the world of dancing. Yeah. Um, and Adrian Carey was on the panel, who Adrian was the first winner of America's Next Top Model with Tyra Banks. Um, so she had all kinds of stories of her own to tell. Um, and uh, Miracle Lori, who was on Joss Whedon's Dollhouse. Yeah, oh yeah. And <laughs> I, I wasn't familiar with Miracle, she was referred to me, and when I Google Miracle, the first things that come up are Miracle's weight, Miracle's size. And I'm like, what? And you know, she's a very tall girl, and she's probably about a size 8, 9, 10, she's which, gorgeous. hello, yeah. um, but apparently um, I, when Dollhouse was running, it was like a 50-50 debate as some people were saying, wow, Joss Whedon is being very body positive by putting a bigger girl on the show, and the other 50% were going, she's not a big girl, and it was a, um, but so she shared a lot of stories. One of was that in her contract, she was not allowed to lose weight. It was in her contract while you're working on this show because her character was portrayed as the bigger girl. She was one of the dolls, she was, you know, but she was bigger. Um, and then we rounded that off uh, with Helena Santos Levy, who's one of my really good friends, who just launched um, an online magazine called Ms. in the Biz. And it's 70 females in entertainment, women in entertainment, blogging about women in entertainment and a very positive community. And it was sold out. We had standing room only. We had a great response. We got a lot of press and just a lot of great feedback. So I've submitted it to Comic Con and a few other places, and you know, fingers yeah. crossed, we'll see. But yeah, I guess it's just you know, like not that no one's ever talked about right. it before, but let's just keep talking and let's right. keep the conversation. And it was so cool to not be on a panel where I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm working on this project and I'm an actress, and instead it was being on a panel talking about like change, Yeah, you know? Well, and it's interesting that you say when like you were thin and like looking good, you were unhealthy, but right. like you feel healthier now. Eh, yes and no. Um, I, I know for me, I need to be, there's, there's a spot where more exercise, more meditation, um, you know, there's a balance, you know, there's a balance. And I had gotten, back then, I had gotten to such an extreme point of always cleansing and always 
fasting and doing all these crazy cleanses and whatnot. So no, in that aspect, I wasn't healthy. But the way I put on 50 pounds wasn't healthy either. Right. You know, like I went the opposite and was doing the binge eating. Um, so, which is a lot of what we right. were talking about on the panel is like, how do you get to that point? Like, so for Lynn, for instance, she started the Actors Diet blog, which isn't about dieting, but she photographs everything she eats. Oh. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it started off as um, an accountability for herself. Right. And now it's just this cool piece where she's like, oh, I went to this big event at Paramount and they, like, she literally posted this blog about a month ago where it was something for McDonald's, but it was on the Paramount lot. And so the food that they served to everyone, you know, in their gowns was McDonald's. Like McDonald's was launching this new thing. And I'm not even kidding though. Of course, after I read that blog, I like had to go out and get McDonald's. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> everyone watching that now, now has to go get McDonald's, right? But um, you know, so there's a balance, there's a yeah. balance. But I recognized that I wasn't being healthy at that point. And um, the healthiest I felt was somewhere in the middle right. of there and here um, when I was working out on a regular basis and eating well. Right. So I'm striving to get back to that level. But in the meantime, I'm learning to love where I am right now and accept where right. I am right now and talk about which it. Is, which is great. I mean, and it is interesting that weight has become... Because I know one of the major responses to the panel was like, are we encouraging diabetes? And it's like mm -hmm. how yeah. weight has become the measure stick for right. health, but a thin person can be as unhealthy as a Absolutely. heavy person. Yeah, because that's the other side of it. It's yeah. like, okay, well, we're, if, we're, if we're saying like, let's be body positive and all encompassing, but then yes, are we then encouraging like, no, it's okay to be 300 pounds, Johnny, and you're eight years old and you're drinking soda and eating <laughs> Cheetos while you're watching cartoons. Like, no, it's not that either. It's a, it's a balance. Yeah. Absolutely, and balance mm -hmm. is key. That's really cool. I think that's yes. awesome. Do you have a favorite like female superhero? Well, uh, you know, I mean, okay. So growing up, you know, it was definitely I was more of like the Batgirl, Catwoman, Wonder Woman, Supergirl um, were my favorites. Although I do love Gem and Holograms um, and Josie and the Pussycats. But a couple of years back, I was introduced to Dazzler. Are you familiar with Dazzler? Oh my gosh, X-Men, yeah. Oh my god, okay. So Dazzler is a Marvel character. And actually, the guys from Robot Chicken um, introduced me to Dazzler. This was a couple years back. Um, when Actually, like four years back when Twitter first started. Um, the Robot Chicken account tweeted like, oh, if we were to do a, a you know, a, a feature, animated feature on Dazzler, who should play Dazzler? And I'm like, who's Dazzler? So I quit Google her. Okay, well, first of all, she's from the East Coast, okay? She's from New York, and she was originally a singer, and her superpower is, is that she can create a light show with her own sound, right? So she does her own light show for her rock concert. Well, then she, and she's a little promiscuous, um, she's a little out there, and then she gave up being a singer, and she moved to Hollywood to be an actress. And I'm like, hello, <laughs> Leah Savoy should be playing Dazzler. And um, shortly thereafter, this is really funny, but shortly thereafter, um, Dazzler started following me on Twitter. Oh, cool. To this day, I still do not know who runs her account, but she became my BFF that summer. And between the Dazzler Twitter and the Robot Chicken guys, they coached me into how to dress like Dazzler. And I went to Comic-Con that year as Dazzler, a San Diego Comic-Con, nice. silver spandex, blonde wig, gorgeous blue makeup, disco balls. And it just so happened, Dazzler also was a roller skater. She skates. It just so happened that that was the year Robot Chicken was doing the Robot Chicken Roller Skate Party Bus Tour, and they were launching it at Comic-Con. So yes, not only did I go to Comic-Con as Dazzler, but I went to the party that night as Dazzler with roller skates on. It was That's amazing. That's awesome. And Dazzler still talks to me on Twitter. She still follows me. I still don't know who she is. Um, but she's awesome. It's, it's whoever gets to the username first. Yeah, that but she's the good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a couple of them out there. She's, she's the good the one. Yeah. So you mentioned the robot chicken party. So you mentioned Michael Laurie from Dollhouse and robot chicken. It's miracle. Mm -hmm. Miracle, mm -hmm. Michael. Yeah. I don't know who Michael is. I don't either. <laughs> miracle. <laughs> Michael was on the panel. Miracle was. Miracle was. <laughs> Miracle Lori and um, yes. Robot Chicken and you, I know you've just worked with a lot of like in various ways with a lot of really incredible people. Do you ever get starstruck? <laughs> Cause I would. You know, um, it was great that right after college I met a lot of like my rock and roll like idols. Yeah. So that I think helped. Um, there when I when I did first book Robot Chicken, um, 
I've worked on Robot Chicken for their first four seasons. I did a lot of character voices, and so the very first time um, that I was called into the office, I had I had previously met Matt Senrich, who is the co-creator, co-executive producer, and he's from New York and he's a writer. And so they brought me in to record that first day. And so I go in, and so not only is this my first time doing animation voiceover, but it's also going to be my Taft Hartley into SAG. Um, and I go in. And so I meet Seth for the first time in the booth, you know, and he's like, oh, hey, I'm Seth. Well, I'm from Philly. Seth's from Philly. So I was prepared. Like, hey, Philly, you know, big hugs all around. Like, awesome, great. So um, at the time, Mila Kunis is in the booth recording. And so I got there about a half hour early, which was great because I got to watch what she was doing, you know, and, and learn, like, the little things about voiceover that you wouldn't know ahead of time is that when someone gives you, like, a line to read as a voiceover artist, you always do it with three takes. You always. You don't, you don't even, like, wait for them to say, do another take. You just, hi, my name is Leah. Hi, my name is Leah. Hi, my name is Leah. And then the director will tell you which way to go with it. That's something I wouldn't have known. So I'm watching her and I'm like, okay, great, do everything three times, you know. And in the meantime, they're like, yeah, have a seat. You know, here's all your contracts you're filling out. Our buddy Mac is sitting here. So I sit down, it's Macaulay Calkin. Because at the time he was dating Mila, right? So I'm like, oh my God, you just met Seth Green. You're about to get your SAG card. You're sitting next to Macaulay Calkin and Mila Kunis is in the booth. So I literally had to take a break. And I was like, does anybody want me to grab a coffee? for them and they were like no so I go out to like the lobby where the coffee and the cookies are and I'm like okay all right cool all right breathe go in this is your job go this is real life go in and do it um so I would think yeah that's <laughs> probably the biggest that was probably my biggest moment of like wow I'm working with these people yeah when you met Macaulay Culkin when you perhaps go yeah <laughs> I might have done it out in the lobby but <laughs> um, <laughs> I saw it's, it's all